G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. In this video we're going to be installing Ubuntu to a separate data partition. Now I can achieve this using the Ubuntu installer. Um, however, I like to use Gparted to set up the disks for that. So Gparted is only available in the live disk. It is not there once Ubuntu is installed. You can install it, not a problem. But it's there as a as a useful utility um, for helping with install. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to delete these current partitions. That's from the Ubuntu install to hold disk. Apply that change. And this is the reason why I like to do this. I like to device create partition and I want to create it as a GPT. So the GPT will allow you more than four primary partitions, um, whereas MS-DOS restricts you to four primary partitions, only maximum. So let's apply that. So first thing I'm going to do is make my AFI partition, which will be 512 megabytes and that will be a FAT32 and add that and then we will do a new partition which is which will be 8192 and allowing for system files that works out to be exactly 8 gig put that as Linux swap and add that next we will create a partition 60 gig partition which is 61440 I believe And add that, that's a primary partition as well, add that. And then we're going to make another new one which will be a primary partition as well, XT4. I probably didn't need GPT because I'm going to use a maximum of four. I just like to use GPT. I've just gotten used to that lately. So let's add that. Now let's apply that. So we've done our disks, our partitions. Now assuming that your data has been backed up, uh, because this is wiping out the whole disk of course. Okay, so with the FAT32 uh, boot, boot partition we need to put some flags on that. It needs to be boot and ESP, which ESP should come up automatically. There we go. Close that. And then with this one here, I'm going to name the partition data. So I can recognize that as my data disk. And there we go, we've got a name there. So let's apply that. So that is the way you can set up your disk in Gparted before you run the installer. Um, if you need to put a name on the data partition, then Gparted is the best way to do that. I'm pretty sure there's not nothing available in the installer to be able to do that. So we're going to go for third party. Okay, so in this case what we're going to do is select something else and continue that and our partitions should come up. So we have our EFI partition there. Um, this one we're going to double click that and we're going to set that as ext4 format the partition and set it as root that's where we're installing it to that's the mount point and um, we're going to be just double click that and check EFI partition yep so what we're going to do is the device for the bootloader installation so this is what um, helps your system boot on the computer is dev sda1 which is the EFI system partition there so we're going to select sda1 and we're not going to do anything with this one here that's just our data partition so as you can see there's no option to sort of name it as a data 
So we've done our system, we've selected our boot device and we've done our um, root partition so we can install now. Let's continue. Australia Perth is me. And let's continue the installation. Okay, so that's the install of the um, separate data partition of Ubuntu 19.04 complete. We shall log into the freshly installed desktop and just have a quick look at auto mounting that data partition and changing the ownership of it as well. So here we are in the uh, freshly uh, installed desktop of Ubuntu 19.04 with a separate data partition. So what we're going to do is quickly have a look at the partition in question that I've done. Um, and there it is there. So it's not auto mounted as you'll see. So if we click on it, it'll mount. And then the partition is open. So if we right click, we cannot create folders or anything like that. If we go to properties, and permissions you'll see that it belongs to root so we cannot change anything on here so we need to auto mount it and we need to add the, um, the ownership to the user so first of all like I did in Ferron we've got disks available in here so disks don't know if there's an about here or not for that show details GNOME Disks is what it's called. You'll find that in the Software Center. Now this is the partition here and you'll see that it's named Data. So that's the partition we're looking at. So what we want to do is make sure you click on that partition in question and then click the gear icon and go to Edit Mount Options and what we do is unselect that and then that will bring it up as an auto mount. Click OK, type in your password. Now that should be um, available as an auto mount now. So what I'm going to do is close that. I'm going to restart the system. I'm going to fire up Simple Screen Recorder and we're going to have a look at files after, in, after rebooting and I will not open it until I've started Simple Screen Recorder and that should be mounted so let's check that out. So here we are back in the desktop and we shall open our file manager and check what's going on. Other locations you can see the eject button there which means it has mounted without me even clicking on it so that's auto mount and that's going to be important when it comes to um, sim linking folders so as you can see we still cannot um, do anything here in new folders or anything so what we need to do now is if we go to properties and we're going to have a look where this is the parent folder is in mount forward slash mount so we're going to open up a terminal and we're going to cd which means change directory and we're going to change the directory to this here. So we're going to type it in exactly how we see it there, forward slash MNT. Enter that, and where you can see the blue MNT. That means we're looking inside that folder, which is the same as if I open a new window here. All we've done is gone to computer, and we've gone to MNT. So we're looking in here. So if we do a list on that, we will see this thing here. So let's go ls for list. And you can see the number of that is the same as that. So that's what's inside that folder here. So that's where it is. So that's what we need to do. We need to change the ownership of that. So we need to sudo um, to give us privileges to do that. sudo. Now that's called chown or chown. Um, change owner sounds a little bit better than change owner. <laughs> I'm just clowning around, but I mean, I think they call it chown. So sudo chown, which means change owner. Put your username, which is what you made up when you installed Ubuntu, which the username is here. B 
before the at symbol and your computer name is after the at symbol so that's you that that will be your username there always lowercase so sudo chown colon and then we go mnt forward slash and then just start typing the first couple of numbers 535 and then hit the tab key that should auto complete and then we enter that and then we enter our password and that's done now anyone who's seen my Ferran video you would have seen that we went into uh, let's just check that we can access that first now you can see we can make a new folder so we got access to that now so if we look at properties the ownership now is me the group is still root and access files so we I can do things in there now so and if you had a look at my Ferran video you would have noticed that I would have gone to there to there to here and right click properties and then just change the permissions in here um, like so and I would have gone permissions and change this and whatever but in in uh, Nautilus you don't have an open as root so that makes it just a little bit more difficult to do so now we have ownership of that folder we can create folders but oh, that'll be a separate video for sim linking your folders to your home folders and and then I'll show you how that works so that is installing Ubuntu to separate partition auto mounting your partition and change in ownership hope you enjoyed this video hope you found it interesting and informative and thank you for watching